TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, man. That's the warning sign. Just in case there's things that, you know, are crazy and things of that nature in the video. Um, don't forget, twitch.com, if you do want to catch a live, bottom of the screen, username. We do got a Patreon, and we also got merch. Got mine in one. Third day in a row. <laughs> this is how drugs are smuggled into UK prisons. This is Channel 4 News. I'm here for educational purposes. You understand me? Actually, just, you know. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under section 107, 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Talk to me, report the news for me. When he first went into jail, he had a weed addiction. I thought him going into jail would help that. And it was a relief. He's going to get some help, going to get off the weed. Mm -mm, probably made it worse. But no, it was putting the kids in the sweet shop, going to jail. 100%. This is the story of one mum, we're calling her Julie, who became ensnared in a sophisticated, well-organised drug economy operating inside prison. Terrifying and As you can, uh, I've so I've heard in several other document documentaries and informable news articles that you could actually get more money inside trapping than on outside. It's more lucrative, is what I've heard from reliable, relatable search sources. Costly consequences for families outside. It begins when her son is sent to Wandsworth Prison in South London on a short sentence. Wandsworth too. The very first time he'd been to jail. After about a week of getting there, he started ringing me up saying he owed money. On the first night, they come up to you and give you a little bit of spice. So it'll just get you over the first night, your nerves and everything mm. like that. And that's on the induction wing. Bro got set up. Um, and then obviously by the time you go on to the main wing, that debt follows you. So it's literally within a week of going on in. The, on the induction wing. He's not only tried a new drug. Yeah. He now owes money. Yeah. Bro went for a quick little bid. First day was a spice addict. Hey, drug free is the way to be, y'all. Uh... And he quickly owes a lot of money. Two, three hundred pounds a week. Money, of course, as a prisoner, he doesn't have. So the dealers inside jail are soon contacting her outside, demanding she pay up or her son will get hurt. As her son's debts rise, the calls and texts to her become more threatening. Owe money big time. It needs paying before Friday or he gets opened up. We know where you live from before someone paying. In here, we boss. You've till Monday to pay or we be round. We paid it because we, you know, we didn't want him to get hurt. No, nah, listen, okay. Though you mind, you paid it the first time. But the first time, I right, you don't know no better, man. They, they made you a victim and here they got you. But the, you continue to run up the debt? At that point, bro, you already let me down and I got locked up. Now you in there, you... you, you, you. You criminal turn nitty. Like, I'm, I'm good. I'm sorry. This is my opinion. I then don't the debts got bigger and bigger. Because I was actually on holiday one day when I got a text to say that he's going to get hot sugared if I don't pay two or three hundred pounds by the morning. Hot I promise I would have replied like this. He said he going to get hurt if he don't pay. I would have. So if it if y'all do whatever you saying you're going to do to him. Is that going to clear the debt? Send. <laughs> if so, 
No, hold on. Delete, 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 delete. If that is the case, I'll be able. I, I'll, I'll. I'll be cool. No, delete, delete, delete. If that is the case, I won't lose no sleep. Go do what you need to do. Am I bogus? I don't. I don't care. You're not gonna go in there and rack up my no, buddy. Sugaring is you. If I don't pay two or three hundred pound by the morning, hot sugaring is you boil water and you put sugar in it and they throw it at you and then obviously it burns you. They don't care blatantly sending their names and bank details. And obviously I'm laying there in a the hotel thinking, oh, do I pay? Shouldn't I pay? And I rang up once a prison, spoke to the officer, and he told me that my son has to pay his debts. Take the prison officer. <laughs> but that's real talk. Mom tried to call a prison officer and get some authority put on it in, in Tattletale. That's not, this ain't the school. This ain't the principal. Like, what you doing? This ain't that. That was his advice. That was his advice. It is what it is. Judy is stunned not only with the officer's advice, but that he seems entirely unsurprised by the fact her son is racking up debt for illegal drugs in jail. She makes repeated attempts to alert the prison authorities, sending a raft of increasingly desperate emails across months and months, phoning them again and again for help. We've seen the emails, Julie explicitly telling them how dealers are targeting her son and then demanding money from her. In this one, she lists the names and bank details of 14 of the many accounts she's paid money into. And yet she says still nothing was done to no, stop. Oh, bro, that's not how this works. The spiraling debt. Or Unfortunately, it is a, 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 a victim. This, this is a victimless crime in, the, in jail. No one cares. It's a vicious cycle, but you know what I'm saying? Bro put himself into that. And ain't no calling mommy to get you out of these situations, to talk to the principal or talk to the warden. You're done. Or the intimidation. She emails Wandsworth Prison. Just wondering why my son is asking for hundreds of pounds. Funny how he's meant to be in jail and not on holiday. She asks again. Did she think this was gonna get a response? And can you please find out why my son needs three grand? Three grand. She constantly writes telling the authorities the demands for money and the threats continue to come from inside the prison. But in one email... I'm sorry. I know we're only three minutes and 36 seconds in, but am I bogus for, like, not caring? Am I bogus for the attitude that I have towards this situation? Like, I... Well, they tell her to inform the police. We in the prison cannot assist with outside prison issues. That's she tough. tells the police about the threats from the prison dealers and they are clearly convinced the risk is real. We had our house flagged, panic buttons put in, everything at my house. I even had this app on my phone that if I ever felt threatened, I could just press it and the police would hear what was going on without me ringing them. That's how serious it got. At one point, her son was moved to a drug-free wing, but he told Julie there were more drugs there than anywhere else. She says, at best, staff were turning a blind eye. At worst... Well, staff was in on it. Some were actively involved. Right. The evidence arriving at the door, soon after her son was released from jail. He had the mobile number of the drug dealer in Wandsworth, and he rang him and said, oh, do you know anyone on the outside that could hook me up? My son rang me that night and said, oh, mum, guess what? I went, what? He went, the officer come to my door with the crack. I said, so what? So you rang somebody in one's a prison and they sent a prison officer to your door with drugs? And he went, yeah. And then I went round there um, a few days later and he turned up again. And I recognised him and all of a sudden I found out he left. The prison service said it didn't recognise the allegations about that staff conduct and won't hesitate to take the toughest action against those who break the rules. The Prison Officers Association said Wandsworth has robust security at the gate in regular use and that drugs get into prisons in a variety of ways, including drone deliveries, throwovers and external visitors. Wandsworth is a Victorian prison, one of the biggest in the country, and is facing a crisis on a number of fronts. Appalling conditions, overcrowding, 
high levels of staff turnover and violence. Kay has been in and out of jail his whole life for offences including drugs and theft. His last spell was at Wandsworth on a driving offence. He says the market for all contraband is extremely hey, zoom in on them. lucrative, so it's no surprise some prison staff become involved in bringing in and supplying drugs. If their salary is shit, I wouldn't go and work in a prison for whatever it is a year. Are they going to zoom in? I th this dude look familiar. They make more money in the six months they're there, probably earn three times that in the oh, six okay, months no. they're there before they leave, just by bringing in tobacco and drugs. Prices are through the roof, like 500 pounds for a gram of tobacco or whatever it is out there. They're only about 15 quid out here. You're paying 500 quid in there. It's stupid. Phones Supply are a critical demand. commodity in the illegal prison economy, smuggled in in huge numbers. I would assume. As for buying mobile phones, smartphones, you're talking about £1,000 plus up to £1,500. Um, a little Zanko like that, which is the size of your thumb, you can buy on a shop out here for £20. They go for three to £500. Callum, not his real name, has just finished a sentence at Wandsworth for assault. He accepts drugs and other contraband get into the prison in many ways, but he's in no doubt some staff are very involved. So when the screws are passing the drugs in, most of the night times, they don't get searched, they can come straight through, they pass the opening door. So all it's doing is making violence. It's getting people in debt and they can't afford to get out of it. And then, then the mums get the phone calls and it stresses out their family. So it's just a big ripple effect. It's just everything. But while former prisoners may see organised drug networks as part of normal Man. life in prison... This low-key, a beautiful cutscene right here. Listen, the MP Fleur Anderson admits she was naive about it all until Julie, one of her constituents, came to her for help to get her son out of Wandsworth oh, and into a different jail. So my immediate concern was the, for her son. So how could we get him out of that situation? So I, I did... I thought, great, we've got an achievement. We've got him moved to a different prison um, and that he would be away from the people who were... Cap, that follows you from prison to prison. Oh, they talk. Um, uh, ...extorting him for drugs. And within two days, Julie was being given bills of £370, which she could then see would be escalating. And nothing had changed from the move, which points really to it not being just about Wandsworth Prison. This is about all of our prison service. Yeah, it's every, it's every. She says she raised her concerns directly with the governor at Wandsworth and others across the prison estate, but wasn't reassured by the response. Did you get a sense there was a level of defeatism or was there confidence that this could be sorted out? It's crazy that the people that are higher up so that are looking in and finally taking notice are feeling defeated about this because the prisons don't want to, you know what I'm saying? But there's nothing, there's literally nothing they can do. Nothing at all. Like, I don't feel like this is a solvable problem. In my personal opinion. So there's a bit of shrugging shoulders and saying, what can we do? Um, which I think comes from the top as well. It comes from government. There needs to be a, a real change. Otherwise, this is just going to carry on. It's, it feels like it was a ticking time bomb quite a long time ago that it, actually, when you see the impact it's got on not just prisoners, but on Ju people like Julie, in my constituency, just people, mums, grandmas, people being extorted, then this is not actually cutting crime. It's breeding it. There is no doubt this is an issue beyond one prison. Just last month, the prison's ombudsman linked four deaths at HMP Park in Wales. Time out, everybody. Let's not... Are we forgetting the common denominator in both prisons? It was the prisoner. You transferred prisoner A to pris from prison B to C, from prison B to prison C, prison a a prisoner A went. And what happened? The exact same thing. Bro went from one place where he had no debt, where he had debt, went to another place where he had no debt and got the same problem. Y'all looking in the wrong spot anyway. Y'all worried about the wrong thing. Focus on what really matters in this situation. Directly to the drug spice making an urgent public appeal to prisoners to destroy all supplies. A member of staff is currently being investigated for allegedly smuggling drugs into the jail. The Ministry of Justice told us there is a zero-tolerance approach to drugs, 
and it's invested £100 million in tough new security measures to stop more getting in. Since my son's first prison sentence, about 50,000 into various bank accounts, which yeah. I've given you all the details for. Oh my God. I really, it's cheaper to disown your son. It's cheaper to disown your son. It's a bad investment. 50K? On some on a, on a prisoner on your son, rather it may be him or not. Fifty k investment. I wouldn't do it. Nobody would tell you to invest that in that type of in that stock. It's just not a good move. Your money ha won't do anything but disappear. I mean, how do you even manage that? It was my parents' savings. How is he now? He's, he's an addict now. He's an addict now. He's yeah, always going to be an addict. The system made him a drug addict. That's why I look at it. And no one's taking accountability. The system didn't make him an addict, but that's what a mom's perspective is supposed to be, though. The system didn't make him an addict. Your son, every action has a reaction. Your son's actions made him an addict. The system had nothing to do with it. The system is going to be the system. You can be above the system. You can, you can avoid the system. Or you could fall prey to the system. The system did what the system's gonna do every time. So, W, mom, you know what I'm saying? For sticking by your child, for believing in your child, and believing your son is a victim in this, it's not. He did it to himself. And there's gonna be some people that argue with me in this, but hey, listen. Argue away. Thank you for that. Tackling the highly organised drug economy in jail is an enormous challenge. A captive, often vulnerable market creating endless demand and with so much money to be made, stemming the supply is just not working. Well, with me here is... I love this lady. From that one thing that we watched before and she cussed dude out about them kids getting... getting hit with GBHs or sharp objects. What's her name, Julie? Mark Fairhurst, who chairs the Prison Officers Association. And joining us from Gloucester is John Podmore, this who served as a prison governor and as an inspector of prisons. prisons. Um, can I come to you first, John Podmore? What do you make of that? The sheer level of organisation, it would seem, the fact that even families outside are being threatened with violence to pay these debts. Well, I, it's no surprise to me. I've been writing about this for years. Uh, serious organised crime is seriously well organised in, in prison. Um, and, you know, here we see effectively... And maybe even more so in prison. ...a mafia-style protection racket where families have, have been suffering. But we've known the drug problem in prisons for, for a long time. It's worse now than it ever has. But we've never, until now, properly asked the question, who pays? And if you extrapolate up from this particular case, I, I would say that the, the illicit drug economy in prisons is, is worth about a billion pounds um, and it, it needs to be tackled. But it's not about evanescent ministers who come and go. And the, a billion pounds is a great disservice. It's probably more than that. And, and secretaries of state and prison ministers. It's about leadership, management and culture of the prison and probation service itself. I mean, as you say, the scale of this problem is quite extraordinary. The chief inspector of prisons recently said he was in a prison where there were more people under the influence of drugs than sober. And in another jail where a fifth of prisoners said they developed a drug habit only once they're inside prison. So why isn't there more focus on this or what is going wrong here? I'll tell you what's going on here. Um, the money that's given to prison to fund them, they're going to the wrong spot. There's nothing to do in prison. There's absolutely nothing to do in prison. So people pass the time or forget about what's going on with what? Class A's, alcohol, or whatever they can get their hands on. You know what I'm saying? Put more workshops in there. I've seen some German prisons. Now, I talk crazy about these prisons in Sweden and Germany and all of that stuff. But that's why they don't have drug addicts in there. Because there's really workshops in there that you could go to on a daily basis and perfect a craft. And, 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 and learn some things 
and have something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? And no, it didn't happen overnight, I'm sure there, but they eventually got there. Well, I mean, the, the, the prison service, as demonstrated in this case, just don't seem to care. Um, it works quite well for them, in a sense, because if you have this level of serious organised crime, you're not going to get prison disturbances because serious organised criminals are not going to allow for disturbances while a lot of money is, is, is being made. But yes, we have a, an excellent chief inspector of prisons who's been talking about this for, for some time, about people going in clean and coming out addicted. Now, the very least we should do in prisons is do no harm, but the prison service, not just with drugs, but with employment, education, and training. Prison, prison does, you said at the bare minimum, do no harm. That When has it ever done no harm? Prison always does harm, because when you go to prison, you come out a felon. That alone, if we're like, I know I'm trying to sound and like, like I'm contradicting myself, but that alone does harm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just speaking on this one comment that he's just made. You go to prison, you come out a felon, you don't get no jobs. It's very hard to get a job. And what does that force you into a life of? Back into a life of crime. Puts you right back at reoffending. You know what I'm saying? Is doing a considerable amount of harm. Um, and as I say, this is about leadership and management and culture. Uh, everyone talks about overcrowding. Yes, we have an overcrowding problem, but one of the prisons that uh, Charlie Taylor went in and observed a major uh, drug problem was a prison called Wood Hill, which is a modern, purpose built prison, well resourced. Yeah and not oh, overcrowded. Really? So this is not just about uh, old Victorian crumbling city okay. jails. Let me bring in Mark Fairhurst. I mean, it is clear that drugs get into prisons in a variety of ways, and no one Would suggests be. that there are huge numbers of prison officers involved. But there are prison officers involved, and that is a part of the problem, isn't it? Well, it's not hip for me to deny that there are corrupt staff. There are corrupt staff in every public sector service, including the police ourselves are no exemption, but we are doing a lot to tackle that. And what I will say is that the majority of staff are hard-working, decent, honest people. We don't want to work with corrupt staff. We want them rooted out, kicked out, prosecuted, and incarcerated for their crimes. But, I mean, but are, they be, are they part of what people are saying is a serious, organised crime network operating within the jails? You heard Julie say a prison officer came to her house to deliver drugs. And I don't, if I'm being honest, I don't think no prison officer signs up to be a prison officer. Okay, let me not say that. I think it's a smaller percent of prison officers who sign up with the initial attempt, intent to do that type of behavior. I think they're uh, persuaded as well. How they're persuaded? I'll leave that up to y'all to figure out. But they're, they're, I think they are groomed and persuaded as well. Targeted. That is really concerning, but we can only act if we've got the intelligence. So we need intelligence from prisoners, from prisoners' families. We have regional anti-corruption teams who work in conjunction with the police. But we can do more. There are measures in place, including security at the gate. But we can do more. We need to be more robust with lockdown searches, with target searches. Unfortunately, governors in prisons these days are more concerned with regime, 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 instead of safety, safety, safety. I mean, you say that, that, that not a lot of officers are involved, but figures show the number of prison officers being investigated in relation to the supply of drugs in prison has gone up significantly in the past three years. So this is a problem that's getting worse. Do you acknowledge that? It is a problem that's more highlighted now because we have better <laughs> procedures in place and regional teams in place to look into this and gather intelligence and act. Is a good I mean, answer. John Podmore, prisoners we spoke to were very, very clear that there is a lot of money to be made. Um, the government says it has put up pay to help the recruitment drive so there are more prison officers. They say they're spending £100 million to improve security to stop drugs getting in. Why does it not appear to be working? Because the human body has three cavities, four, four potential places. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? It get ugly. 
Well, we, we have a real problem at the moment about the vulnerability of, of staff. Um, and it's absolutely right that the majority of prison officers are hardworking and dedicated. Now, if you were to say that in any one cohort of, of, of prison officers, there were, say, you know, 100 who were corrupt. Now, in my experience, the vast majority of those are not criminally, uh, they're by criminal intent, they're not malicious, they're not malign, but they have been um, conditioned, manipulated, threatened. You know, we, Told you know you. we're talking now Told about you. honey traps. Staff are very, very vulnerable. And dealing with corruption properly, and I'm sorry the prison service is not dealing with corruption properly, it trots out this, uh, these, these technical measures. This is a people business. It's not just about having scanners at the gate. It's about leadership, it's management, it's training. You know, and, and some prison, prisons now do play a, a good salary. But prison officers need to be led and they need to be protected. And in order to protect them, there needs to be a much greater focus on the role of serious organised crime in prisons. I mean, it's a culture problem. That is about your people, isn't it? It is a leadership issue because when they're obsessed with unlocking prisons with absolutely nothing to do for the sake of unlock to look good in front of an increasingly out of touch chief inspector, then that has a knock on effect. What I'm saying is we need to get back to basics. Don't forget that the prison service has been subject to over £900 million worth of cuts from this government. They disbanded dog sections in local prisons like Wandsworth, which would have prevented throwovers. It would have had sniffer dogs at the gate to go through staff and prisoners. They disbanded those dog sections. They haven't invested enough in training on how to recognise how you're getting conditioned as a new member of staff. So there are more robust procedures that we can incur in our prisons to prevent all this. It does need to be tackled, but it needs to be tackled at the front line robustly with support from senior leaders. Mark Fairhurst and John Pogner, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to end. Once again, man, when I hear people talk, that's wishful thinking. It sounds good in your head, but is it really going to get done? I don't think so personally. I think that one is a never ending thing. See y'all leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, man. I'm gone.